Hello EFD squad and welcome back to Transfer Review where we take a look at the latest paper talk and put it under the microscope and pato after four coaches, two planes, three trains, a taxi and an Uber, I'm finally home. Mm. It's only taken me 18 hours from Spain, I might as well have swam. It was worth it though for um, this, this lovely tan. I have incredible breaststroke as well. And it is a lovely tan. Anyway, what Very have good. we got first? It is Renato Sanchez to AC Milan on loan. Oh, let's start mm. with the loan deal. What do you yeah. make of that, big man? Well, Milan are on the verge of seeding their 11th signing of the summer. <laughs> that seems like a lot of signings. Mm. I don't know what you think. Now, of course, he was signed by Bayern in 2016 for 35 million euros. He was the rage of the market that summer. Everyone wanted him. Yeah. Man United were after him. But this season, Ancelotti says, I accept that he's going to go on loan, by which he means he's shit, get him out of the club. Uh, <laughs> now, there's some debate over the structure of the deal. Some yeah. people say that it's going to be a one-year a one year loan, a two-year loan, the cost varies, will there be an option to buy, won't there be? So it looks like it's going to be somewhere between kind of 5 and 7.5 million euros a year. And if there is an option to buy, it'll probably be around 40 mil. So regardless of what happens, Bayern would see a profit on it. Which is mental. Yeah, it's an odd one, isn't it? He only made six Bundesliga starts last season, so I'm not sure why AC Milan would commit to such a large financial package, one that replicates that of James Rodriguez. Now, Portuguese record seemed to have the scoop on this, and they correctly reported his move to Bayern last season. Yep. So the, maybe, maybe, Pato, there is some legs in this. But this one thing's for sure, he's not getting that Bayern midfield, is he? Rudy, Thiago, Talisa, Vidal, James, I mean, even Kimmich and Martinez can play in midfield. Good point. But what do you get in AC Milan's midfield? They've just signed Kessier, they've got Locatelli, they've got Montalivo. I know AC Milan f fans aren't particularly keen on him. Buenaventura, uh, Suso. Who else have I missed out? Lucas Biglia, who they've just signed. Chalanoli. Chalanoglu from Bayer Leverkusen. The absolute free kick dynamo. He so probably would get in though, come on. You think? Yeah, come on. He's, quite, he's a quality little player and I think he's so dynamic that you'd have thought he could do something for them at least in Serie A. But Monte likes to play a 4-3-3, right? Uh, yeah, but I think if you've got, I suppose that he's kind of going to, he'd do a similar role to Kessier, wouldn't he? He's a bit more, yeah, he's a bit more of a box-to-box -box midfielder rather than an outright defensive midfielder or attacking midfielder. Yeah, what you want is a distributor who could play alongside Kessier and Renato Sanchez. So maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense, but it looks like they're, I mean, some of the players they're going for this summer seem like really smart. Like, look, we've got this hole in the squad and some, some of them it's like, well, this is, this is a big reputation and we need to sell some f***ing shirts, so let's yeah. just sign this guy. I mean, I can't work out this move, but after that trip, I can barely remember my own name. So what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments below. Staying in Italy for mm. our next move, and Roma apparently won Riyad Mahrez out on the wing next season. They're willing to pay 35 million euros to get the Algerian over to the Eternal City. But their first offer, not quite as generous, was it? No, the cheeky has only bid 23 million euros for him, Pato, which in this current climate is absolutely trolling, isn't it? That's nothing. Man. That's Arsene awesome Wenger shit. Yeah, that's, a, that's like Andros Townsend money. <laughs> <laughs> but Leicester are holding out for 35 million euros, and rightly so, because he was instrumental in their title winning season and looked a rejuvenated player under Craig Shakespeare at the tail end of last season. What were you doing back there? Nothing. Anyway, Morris has already handed in a transfer request, hasn't he, back mm -hmm. in May saying that he wants a new experience. Don't leave Riyadh, just, you know, take up darts or something. Yeah, Ooh, new experience does sound a little bit, a little bit touchy-feely, doesn't it? Yeah. Want some massage? <laughs> <laughs> happy ending. Hopefully this will be a happy ending for both club and player. Anyway, sources have told the Leicester Mercury, can't believe that's Whoa. down there, my hometown rag, it's the first time and last time that I'll probably make it in, that he's already agreed personal terms with Roma so it's the matter of just a fee being hammered out. Now, it looks like it will also take a sizeable pay cut, Pato, to join the club in Serie A. We know that though, their TV rights, not as lucrative as over here, but Champions League football. Well, yeah, that's definitely true, but the wages would be a significant mm. loss. He'd go down from 80K a week to around 50K a week, which is a oh. sizeable drop. And when you're 26 years old, this could be kind of the last major contract of your career. So in that sense, it's kind of hard to see what's going on, but there have been rumours that he might wait and see if Barcelona or Arsenal come back in for him, who of course could offer significantly better wages than that. Now he'd be a replacement for Mo Salah, who left for about 40 million euros off to Liverpool. And if you're gonna pay 35 million for him, whilst I think that's a good price for Mahrez, I think then they sold Salah a little bit low because Salah, I think, is a much, much better player than Mahrez. Really? Yes, he's uh, much... I wouldn't go as far as saying much, much better. I mean, if you look at his numbers, like, look, Riyad Mahrez had an insane season 
in 2015-16 when they won the title. We got 17 goals, 11 assists, 1.4 chances created per 90. Now, Mo Salah last season actually got a better <coughs> goals and assists per game ratio than that. He only made 29 starts, got 15 goals and 11 assists, and he created 2.3 chances per game. Mm. So he's literally creating one and a half times the number of chances per game that Mahrez is in a better team, uh, you know, where they're going to play sitting defences. Admittedly, he had a better coach as well. Yeah. But Salah was great playing down the middle as well off Sheko, wasn't he? He offered them a really quick transition from attack to defence because of his frightening pace. Mahrez, maybe a little bit more of an out-and-out -out winger. We know he can mm -hmm. play 10 as well. We saw it against Atleti and he was great. But is Mahrez going to be stuck to that right-hand side? Will they, will they struggle to find someone to partner Sheko as a result? Well, that's the thing. I mean, they're going to have to think about a transition after the Dzeko era anyway, right? Because whilst he's still very, very good, he isn't getting any younger. Uh, I agree that maybe he's not as flexible as Salah and he's obviously not as fast as Salah, though he is pretty quick. I'm not sure his future lies at number 10. Um, but moving to Italy, we might find that defences don't know what he wants to do as much. They don't know he wants to cut in or whatever, and he might be able to fool them a bit more. He's much better... Uh, as a dribbler than Salah is. Salah's way of dribbling is just to push it and go, whereas Mahrez can actually beat a man with skill. So it'll be interesting <coughs> to see what he does there. And maybe Roma think that somebody like Gerson is ready to step up and shoulder some of the creative load as well. So it won't all be on Mahrez's shoulders. But what we want to know is, where should Riyad Mahrez head next season? Should he go to Barcelona, stay in Leicester, go to Arsenal or join Roma? Vote in the poll right up there, right now. I think Leicester is going to get 3%. <laughs> That'll be one vote for me. Going back to Milan now, Pato. This week's transfer review, bit of an Italian buffet. We've had the antipasti. Mm -hmm. We've had a few meatballs. The polpetti. And now we're getting stuck into the pizza or the carbonara. The choice is yours. And this one is Spalletti going after Nyangolan, the Belgium midfielder. He wants to pluck him from his old club, Roma. Mm. Now, I know you're a big fan. The yeah. fans know you're a big fan. Let's talk a bit more about him. Firstly, congratulations for not saying spaghetti after your little food thing and then saying spalletti. I was quite impressed by that transition. But yeah, of course he wants him. He was a loyal player for him, the 29-year-old powerhouse midfielder, when spalletti was in charge of Roma. Now, he's been quoted as saying, uh, we need to let certain situations mature, and Nyingalan is one of them. It's been talked about, and the directors are keeping that in mind. So, you know, that's pretty like vague, a fine wine honest. or a blue yeah. cheese. But Roma are claiming that the Belgian might well sign a new deal at the Stadio Olimpico and it's going to take a big fee to lure him away, perhaps as much as £60 million. Pounds. Big commitment for someone so old. Well, yeah, but he is a fantastic player and as we know, players age in a slightly different way in Serie A. But you look at Inter's midfield and it's hard to see why they're targeting somebody in this particular position, yes. as good as Nyingalan is. They've got Galliardini, they've got João Mario, they've got Gary Medel, who of course can play there as well as centre-back. Borja Valero, who they just signed, Kondogbia and Brozovic. So, what would Nyingalan offer that they need? Versatility, I think, more than anything. He's, he's shown us this season he can play as an attacking midfielder, sure. he can play as a defensive midfielder, he can be box to box. The guy literally has everything. Now, now England is also, this season as a result of playing further at the pitch, become a goal-scoring threat, which yep. historically he's not been. But um, he's averaging 0.3 goals per 90, while still getting a combined 2.8 tackles and interceptions per game. Now, they're not bad numbers considering he played attacking midfield 25 times this season. He's still getting back. He just can't resist, can he? He mm. loves to tackle this guy. Loves putting in the effort. His, his shirt, whenever I watch Roma, his shirt is always sodden when he comes so off. Done. And that's what we like in England. We like a bloke who runs, we. Anyway, but then the Xiao Mario, right, who's creating mm. 2.4 chances per 90 last season for Inter Milan. So maybe he plays a bit further up in the midfield. Nyingalan patrols the middle and can dog be up, mops up at the back. But Inter fans, would you welcome Nyingalan at the club? How much would you spend on him? Let us know in the comments below. Transfer shocker this week comes from England. Weirdly, the sensible rumours coming from Italy. The crazy moves coming from London town, mate. Chelsea are wilding out. What is going on mate, in Chelsea? They are having an absolute acid tree, Primo mate. Russian coach now, flying around. <laughs> according to Sky Italy, they've had a 100 million euro bid rejected by Juventus for Higuain, but... Mental. They're not willing to match Madrid's valuation for Morata, someone who's six years younger for 20 million less. Mm. So the air is thick mm. with bullshit. 
fucked on this one. Now, apparently, as a result of that rejected bid, Chelsea are going to go after Sergio Aguero. That'll probably work. Another striker approaching 30, albeit a very prolific one. Now, Chelsea are obviously desperate for a striker after the whole Diego Costa saga, missing out on Lukaku and uh, apparently dropping out of the race for Alvaro Morata, as I said. Now, of course they'd want Aguero. But why would Pep let that happen? Why would he sell someone who scored a Premier League goal every 110 minutes to one of his biggest rivals, the club who've just romped to the title last season? Talking of romping, Patrick Armstrong. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Pep doesn't give a shit about Aguero, you know? Like, Aguero was great last season, 29 in 30, that's in all competitions, obviously. He's got 20 goals, Pro in the league for the last three seasons. Mate. Despite the fact he's always injured, he just comes back and he just bangs a few goals, gets injured again, comes back, bangs a few goals. Though actually, it's worth remembering that a lot of the minutes he missed last season because he got red carded, I think once or twice, rather than because he was just broken. Yeah. But at 29 years old, chances are he's going to spend more time off the pitch than on it. Now, Conte doesn't really give a shit, does he, about yeah. the injury record, so long as Aguero went on the pitch. Or spending money. Well, yeah, that's true as Zero. well. Given. But I've got an idea for Chelsea. Go on. Why don't they not sell Diego Costa? <laughs> <laughs> How about that? Bill Bridges. Keep the guy who won you the title two out of the last three years and Atletico Madrid the title the year before that. That's my plan. I mean... So I Chelsea, have... if you want to hire someone who may try and get you relegated for jokes, then this boy. I have nothing more to contribute to this. It's an absolute stinker. So that was this week's transfer review, guys. Have we missed any big hitters? Let us know, as always, in the comments below or get us on Twitter or Instagram. Pato, I hear you're on 997 followers on Instagram. Don't actually know the exact figure, but pretty certain I'm below 1,000. So tip me over, guys, so long as you like pictures of food and not football. And whoever's the 1,000th, one took me a little bit to get that out. Will uh, Pato make you a tiramisu? Yeah, or Joe Tomlinson will send you a dick pic of his penis shining like the sun. You could look fine in that. Yeah. So, see you later. Sayonara.